Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. We're joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 153. Return the day number within two dates. All right, this one seems tricky to me. Mike says he has a couple of different ways to do it. I'm not even sure I have one way to do it. Uh, is there a way for Excel to return the day numbers within two dates? For example, uh, between these two dates, return 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, why? Well, the one trick I have uh, that takes two dates, a start date and an end date, and coerces an array out of that, uh, uses the indirect of the first date joined together with a colon and the second date. You know, these dates are actually stored as serial numbers, you know, somewhere up in the 40,000 range. Uh, so this is saying, hey, we're going to point to these rows from the first row to the second row, and then I have to wrap that in the row function. The row function, and um, when I um, accept that formula with an enter, and then press F2, F9, you see that it's returning four different numbers. And those are actually the serial numbers for the dates. I press escape, uh, and so then I can ask for the day of all of that. And again, we get just the first one, but if I press F2, F9, it is returning the whole array. So let me copy that formula to the clipboard, Control C, and we'll come over here, select several cells, type the formula, and Control Shift Enter. Nope, 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 no, that's not going to work. Boy, if there was some way that I could wrap this in concatenate, but concatenate can't deal with something like that, and I don't have the more funk uh, add in, so I can't do mconcat. Um, all right, let's uh, let's try this. Maybe it's that they're returning the dates in a vertical fashion. So we'll type the formula again. Control Shift Enter. There we go. Seven, eight, nine, ten. But I have to select more cells than I actually need. And if this date would change, and I didn't select enough dates, then I'm not going to see enough. So you know, I don't even know what I'm trying with the formula here. Mike, I'm sure has a couple of different formulas. I'm just going to go with VBA. Uh, here's the start date, the end date, start date, end date, start date, end date. We're going from row 8 to row 10, uh, Alt F11, I wrote this code. We're going to look from R equal 8 to 10, figure out the start date from column 2, the end date from column 3, initialize a counter. This is where we're going to write the first answer to. For D equals start date to end date, the uh, cells in this row and wherever the counter is, so it's going to start at 4, is equal to the day. It's going to loop through and get each day and then we're moving the counter over so let's just run that and we'll come back to Excel and there we go 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 21st there, 17 and if it actually wraps to a new month it starts over again uh, at 1. All right Mike I'm curious to see what you have I'm sure that you have something uh, let's take a look. Thanks Mr. Excel oh VBA that's beautiful and I still don't know how to write VBA. And this too, I love it, a formula element to create an array of days from a start and end. Uh, that's a beautiful array formula there. I guess I'm just going to keep it simple here and do a non-array formula. Hey, I'm going to start out by calculating the number of days. So I'll take the end date minus the begin date. And I need to include that start date. So I'm going to add one back in. So I got four. I need a formula here that will calculate in the first four cells, but show nothing when it goes down and change dynamically. So I'll simply use if. And inside of the logical test, I'm going to use a formula number incrementer. So I'm in F5. I'm going to type F dollar sign 5 to lock that first 5. And then F5, notice the second 5 a row is not locked. That's an expandable range. So as I copy it down, rows will count the rows. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to ask any time that formula number incrementer is greater than the number of days, F4. That means I'm past row four, like down here. Bloop. Then I need to show for value of true nothing. And the syntax for nothing is double quote, double quote. That's a null text string. Otherwise, I'm simply going to run this formula using the day. I'm going to start with the start date. And I'm going to add to it this formula number incrementer. So it'll give me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, that'll give me 7 plus 1 to start. So that's not what I want. So I'll subtract 1 right off the bat. Close parentheses, Control Enter, and copy it down. Ah, so it looks like it's working. Let's test it. 9 slash 21, Control Enter. It's working there, Control Z. Let's put a bigger date 
to start off, because that's how you're filling out this little form. Ah, so the minus shows nothing, which is good. But wait a second, when we put 10 slash 2, 32 days. Man, I wish I could get an extra day in a month. So that formula is not going to work, but no problem. I'm simply going to take this little uh, bit here, adding 1, 2, 3 as it copies down, Control X, and then put it next to the serial number. Now the day, since this is a serial number with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 being added, the day will get it right. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Now. Let's take a look at this. In Chapter 8 of the Control-Shift-Enter book, I talk about this formula element and a bunch of other number incrementing uh, formula elements. Now, one thing that I try to stay away from is row of A1, although it's much easier to type out than the dollar sign and Fs and all that, Control-C, when I structurally change the spreadsheet, we can get into trouble. So watch this. Oh, yeah, that's nice. It's much shorter, faster to type out, and it will work. However, there's some situations where it will not work. That cell A1, boom, it's being referred to. Notice, here's our formulas. That reference is outside of this range. Notice, this is not looking outside of any of our inputs and our formula range. So the only time this is ever going to get deleted is if I delete any of this, which means I don't want the, the whole setup. But if I come over here and delete, it will give us a reference error. If you delete the row, the column, you'll also get reference errors. And if you insert, this is a structural change we do often. Insert, boom, will be off by one, Control Z. All right, so there's my take on it. Throw it back to Mr. Excel. Hey, all right, Mike, that is really cool. When you said you were going to do something that was not an array formula, I was like, oh my gosh. But I'm glad that you were able to bring an array formula thing from the Control Shift Enter book back. In. I'm guilty of using row of A1 because I'm all about it's just shorter. Uh, but I would certainly run into trouble if I did any of these four things. Make that on my list of things not to do. So, hey, uh, great question. I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel. And Excel is fun.